Okay, welcome back to a Fruitia anime review, episode number four. This is reviewing the last three episodes that officially have aired for the series right now, covering episode 11 to 13, which is the fourth book of the series. And it seems as over the first episode they skip over some stuff. Yes. Now, they they don't have in the first episode of the, this set of episodes the guy who was the cardinal son they rescued in the previous set of episodes. Yeah, he's absent from this episode for some strange reason in the book. He just simply not there. Probably he's there. He's probably in their hotel. Now, they do they do cut out here of basically Hajima telling Shia like why did you save her? And he she says basically that she's important to, to Hajima and like she wants reward. And the reward she wants Hajima has no interest in giving to her. Basically, what he she wants him to do is take her virginity. Yep. So instead, they go on a date, which is where they kind of do this episode. Now, I don't. I kind of get the reason why they cut that because it, even though it was kind of necessary, they could have added on to the little bit of the end of episode number ten. But nope, they didn't. They ended with basically the group just driving off in, in, in the Humvee. Mm hmm. So. Basically, if Hajima and Chi are going on a date, and you have Yui and Tao just wandering town doing shopping, and of course, well, we have Hajima basically coming across a mermaid, a, a little girl who was kidnapped prior to this episode. Yeah, in case you're wondering, like, did they actually show in the light novel how she was kidnapped? Not that I remember, no. I even though I read this light novel just a few days ago, but no. There is no scene of them actually showing that particular scene, which probably didn't need to see it. Basically, how she was found is that somehow she mysteriously washed up on shore, and she suffered from her parents. She does mention she doesn't have a father. She doesn't have a mother. Her mother does appear in the series. I haven't got to her for her parents yet. I think she appears a little bit later, but probably not been adapted yet. So, yeah, they, rest, they, they find her, take care of her, but instead of just basically just... Well, doing something different with her, Hajima just drops up the guard out. That's bad that he does. Of course, she calls him Big Brother at first, and then of course the guard house. Like not long after Hajima and Shia leave, the place is attacked by criminals. Yeah, the criminal in the world. So Hajima, him and his group go on a freaking rampage across the city, the city that they're in. They take out all the gangs, like while searching for Mayu. That's her name, Mayu. Of course, Hydema does find her at an auction house, takes her the guy, frees Maya, and of course the place is blown up, and well, then they go off. Yep. And of course she starts calling him Papa. And of course she introduces to you, like, this is Yui, my lover. Yes, the woman who is the body of a 12-year-old and over 300 years old. This is his lover. Okay. Despite the fact, also, Shia and Tao are in love with him. Though Tao is a pervert. And she refers to Yui as big sister, which that that's actually quite nice the fact they do that. This one actually refers to Hajima as Poppy. It's like at first, though, eventually comes around to it. So, they drop off the Count's son at the start of the next episode to the guild head. And, well, then they're basically drops them off and they go to the next city. And then, like, they meet up with the, the guild head. This is the same city where the, the series started. And... They meet with him, and of course, they're there for less than five minutes, and then all of a sudden, one of his old classmates shows up, the one who can turn invisible. I think his name is Nitsuko, I think his name is. Yeah. Of course, he's voiced by Justin Brenner, the guy who voices Deku from My Hero Academia, same voice actor. And, of course, he explains, of course, in a flashback of why he's there. The group was attacked by demons. In the same labyrinth they actually went to at the start of the series. Why they're still going to the same labyrinth is never actually explained. Neither in the book or in the actual anime itself. Why? They're just basically a power boost. So, he does explain that they were attacked by a demon who takes the form of a woman with pointy ears. And she, she basically turns one of the healers, turns her legs to stone... And I have to look at this woman's name, the one who's a swordswoman in the group. Let me look up her name here. She does appear in these episodes. And she's a very important character to these to these last couple episodes of the series that officially have aired. Let's see if I can get to it. Come on. 
Let's see here. I want to see if I can get her name right. Okay. There we go. Okay, her name is. If I can get to it. There we go. Let's see. She's a coup. Yeah, she's a coup. Yeah, her katana that she got at the start of the series during the battle with these monsters breaks. Yep, it breaks. And, of course, well, we have Nidiko basically explaining all this. And Kari, basic, who is revealed to she's in love with, well, Hydra, they actually don't. She hasn't expressed this a little bit later. So, asking how long is like, fine, I'll do it. But we're not classmates, we're friends anymore. I'm just passing, helping a bunch of strangers. That's basically his perspective. And then they go to the lab, and he's like, I've been to, I've been this part before. So they run, it's like, we need a shortcut to get down where they are. So he just summons a drill. Yes. With his, with his create magic and and transform magic. His, he basically drills down what looks like about five floors. And they jump down. And basically he jumps down with, with a big spike that goes to the freaking ground. He lands on how about Yui jumps down too. Of course Yui lands in his arms. And then Yui uses her, her basically her magic. Now Maui is in the arms of Tao. Yeah, Tao. And they come down. Of course Kari is like... Of course, she overhears Maui call Hydra Papa. She does basically get a little upset by this. And Hydra basically uses guns to kill a lot of monsters. And the woman's and the female demon's like, what the heck is this? And after basic and of course they do show now the whole thing of him basically running down in the drill. That actually shown at the start of the very next episode 13. Like, I love the way they ended the end of the last episode, like showing off like, oh. Like a really badass moment, like about one of the members about to get killed, and he's saved by Hajima. And then after basically having all four members, like, now Tao doesn't do much fighting this episode, last episode. Yui basically is there for guard duty to basically guard all his former classmates, and does protect him, every single one of them. And of course, Haido gives Shizuku a brand new katana, which from what from the information I've read, she still has the katana and it hasn't broke yet. So she uses it, and she, she takes out a snake, which is really cool, and the head lands in Kari's arms. In Kari's arms is so hilarious. And then eventually the female demon is killed. And then, basically, they get outside, of course, at, at, at the... Now, Shira's job was to take care of the soldiers. Tao was just taking care of Maui. And, of course, so this is, of course Kari basically is squeezing her shoulders, like, like what's the Papa stuff? That is not exactly fully explained here. They also cut off the lines like, what, what, uh, asking Hydra, what, what's with the master stuff from Tao? They actually cut that from the anime. It's minor at best. And then they get outside, and Kari says to him after they defeated the monster, just she wants to go to Hajima, and then she, she's in love with him. Which all the soldiers there are there who are just happily there because oh army of demons basically taking out the group of heroes so summon basically a whole freaking battalion and they're all shocked to hear that this healer is in love with the he with the with the white hair guy that, that's basically from their perspective and he's like sure now they do cut a little sequence I thought was completely pointless in the book of what's his name here he's basically her childhood friend let's see. His name is Cocky, yeah. Yeah, they actually cut it from the actual thing, which I kind of was very happy because this whole thing was in the book was pretty pointless. Yeah, Kawi and Hajima basically duel, and of course Hajima wins really easily. And, of course, you, his perspective is, like, he's, like, basically so stuck ho about his ways and that that Kari should be with him because of child friends. Yeah, she's like, no. It's people's choice to do that. She's not going to force. And, of course, he is under... Now, they do cut a lot of his stupid thoughts, like, oh, he thinks that he forced Yui to come with him. Which is how some characters are written. Yes. I'm kind of glad they cut this out because his thought process is really stupid. Yeah. And he's supposed to be one of the good guys in the series. 
And this guy thinks so stupidly. They do kind of show this off a little bit later during the close the credit sequence of him trying to stop Kawhi from going with Hajima. But like up sees a coup, stops him, pulls him by the collar. He's like, no. And of course, she asks, like, are you going with him? Like, time will tell. I think she does mention go with him, but not right yet. And of course, Hajima tells Kari, he's like, okay, you want to come with us? Fine. We're leaving in the morning. And, of course, she and Yui develop a rivalry over Hajima's affection, which I think is so hilarious. The fact that Hajima's got, like, well, now she, he's got, like, four women who fight over his affection, despite the fact he loves Yui. And this why he tells Kari that he can't accept it because he's in love with someone else. And she obviously points out it's Yui because she's beautiful. I don't think she'll he'll mind having her around. Like, Hajima's group has no problem with her at all. And it's interesting. Now, the one thing each book has in common is a Hydra's drawn by a brand new girl. This, these episodes drawn by two girls. Basically, one was four classmates and a little girl he takes as a daughter. In the first book, and in the first five episodes, is Yui. In the second book, it's Shia, which was basically adapted for the first, for the sixth and seventh episodes of the series. Book three, it's Tao. From who appeared in first period in the third book of the series, and she appeared in episode in her in not, those ep- episodes eight through ten. This said episodes that book four, which was two hundred forty two pages. Yes, each of these books keep getting shorter and shorter. And I'm kind of glad they cut out the that whole minor sequence of the duel, which I didn't think was necessary. But from what I can tell, they did a really good job with adapting book four even though it was only for three episodes yeah they did cut out one they did cut out like one scene that i kind of thought was necessary they could have thrown it in here but they didn't but the, the scene that i definitely think that should have been cut out which i'm pretty happy with was the pointless duel yeah the, the duel was completely pointless between between koki and hajima because his thinking is so stupid it kind of reminds me of the spear hero from rising of the shield hero where his thought process is pretty much very similar to this guy. And the thing is, Spear Hero is written to be worse than this guy is. Yeah, and also, he has a thing for a little girl. Yeah, he has a lolly complex. In the case of Hajima, you might be thinking, is he in love with a girl? Kind of, yes, but she's like 300 years older than he is. Mm-hmm. But all in all, in my honest opinion of these 13 episodes... I thoroughly enjoy them. They're really good. I was not really a big fan of the animation for a lot of the monsters they showed in this series. Though I think in the last few episodes they did kind of improve, make it look a little bit better. And I would say the character who looked best in the CGI that they show for the series is Tao in Dragon Form. I thought that was really well handled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I did hear a complaint about the music for the series. I love the music. It's just pure fun. Yeah, it's pure fun music, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, it's something that I do thoroughly enjoy. And mostly put, it's a great series overall. Yep. Now, there's still technically two things left to review for the series. Which I'll do in episode 5, which is simply put the two OVAs. Now, they didn't show it in the Funimation ver- dub for this. But it has been announced that there is like a season coming. But not when it's coming out yet. As far as I know, there is season 2 coming. It's been announced. Okay, that's good. Especially since I liked how the season ended. It's a little better than how the book presented it, but at least I hated it to these three episodes. It's better than what they did with book 2, where they try to cram in basically a lot of stuff into two episodes. I think three episodes is okay, for the most part. Especially since, like, for this, ep- for this ep- three episodes, it's 242 pages. They cut from when I can tell, roughly two scenes. Like, one was unnecessary to cut. I kind of thought they should have kept that in. The second scene they cut, or at least they alter it, it's fine. I have no problem with the fact that they changed it, because it was pointless in the book, so cut it out. Don't really need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not much else to say about this season overall. And expect to see a review of the OVAs soon. But the next thing I'm going to do is review the newest episode of Re-Zero. Because new episode probably came out today. Because 
Well, they did release an episode. They, this, yeah, I think it's going to be the fifth episode overall release for the season. At least the sixth one overall released today. So I expect to see that one soon. And then see reviews for a free up later on today. And then I'll go back to One Piece briefly. Now, you're probably thinking, what is my next anime going to do? Even though, yes, I still got two OVAs left to go for Freya. Next one I'm going to do is the Quintessa Quintuplets. Why did I choose this one? Why not? I'm interested in it. I mean, it's a guy, basically, who tutors, basically, four smoking hot sisters. Who are all Quintuplets. Which, that's kind of an interesting premise. A guy becomes a tutor for them. And, they're, and basically, he's the same age as all four of them. And I'm interested in exploring. I've already read the chapters that they've adapted for the series. And I will be reading the rest of the series after I finish watching the anime. I'm going to watch the anime after I watch the next seven episodes of One Piece, which is going to be my second part of my review for Any's Lobby. Okay? That review probably will come tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, so expect to see about two more videos today. Though, there's also going to be episode 3 got uploaded today because I did not get a chance to upload last night because how late I got last night. So, basically, you're going to get two videos in a row and you're going to see me wearing two different t-shirts. So, the other one's from last night. This is from today. Okay? So, that's it for the signal of you. Stay tuned for ReZero soon. Okay? See you next video. Bye!